PeachTool.com. G'day guys, Pete from Peach Tools, great to see you here again today. Hey, something a little bit different for you fellas today. If you guys are interested in what I do during the day, because I run a dumpster company, I own a little dumpster company, and I'd just like to show you the truck that I made up. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper to get into it to start off with if you haven't got a lot of money, like me, you know, it's cheap as chips. Pe anyway guys, I'll show you my trucks, and I'll show you the one I built up myself, and uh, let me know what you think. Always remember to subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say day at peachtools.com, and uh, let's get into it. So this is my main dumpster truck guys, this is the one I brought already factory made and I made up another one myself, I'll show you my other one that I did. So here's my other one I made up guys over here. See them? They look identical don't they? See you look at that one, now you look at that one they look identical but they're two totally different things here in New Zealand anyway. This one here in New Zealand you can drive on a normal car license and this one over here, this one here looks almost identical doesn't it? But you need a truck license, a heavy trade license to drive that here in our country anyway. I don't know what it's like where you guys are, but uh, check out the rules before you start into this game. So to engage the PTO on this, you just turn the PTO switch on like that. The computer tells the gearbox to engage the PTO. We used to just have a cable that you could pull, but not these days. It's getting real sucky, I reckon, anyway. And then you got your controls here for up, down, and tip. Now, I brought this unit new out of Japan. It was about 50000 bucks to get it landed here, as you see it. Um, it's not that old really, it's blue tech there as well, but it's still bloody expensive if you're trying to get into this game. So what I did with this one guys is I imported this as a cab and chassis, I think this was originally a furniture truck out of Japan. I'll put some photos and you can see it on the wharf in Japan. Much the same inside here, it's just the controls are a little bit different. And what I did with this one guys, I didn't want the expense of the computer controlled hydraulics for the PTO. So I did a bit of thinking and I thought to myself, I thought to myself, there must be a better way of doing it, cheaper way of doing it. So I actually did it with a uh, forklift motor, with the uh, electric motor that powers the hydraulics on a forklift. See guys, this is basically the same truck, but it's a different truck if you know what I mean. And this you need a truck license to drive, whereas that one over there you don't need a truck license to drive, it's crazy. But the lifting weight on this truck is 200 kilos more than the lifting weight on that truck. That's why you need a truck license. All seems a little bit crazy, but anyway, those are the rules. They're the rules you've got to stick to. So this one here, all I did was use the original switch here. That was the switch already mounted in the dash. And I got my deck off another truck. So all I did with this one, guys, is a simple off-on switch here to my control panel here. This is all pre-wired, it's just still like plug and play. So you take it off one truck, put it straight on the other. You just need to find your power leads and away you go. See, I put a couple of huge batteries in this too, guys, because this is running on battery power to pull my bins up and down. And all we did was swap this deck over here. See, this is a twin cylinder one, this one. Exactly the same sort of hook mechanism, but just got two cylinders instead of one. So what we basically have here, guys, is this is just a toolbox on the side of my truck that I built up. And this here is the um, power unit off a forklift, a 24 volt power unit for the hydraulics. So to put this truck on hydraulics guys I got a quite a 9 grand, so I didn't want to spend 9 grand. So what I did is I brought an old forklift motor that powers the uh, hydraulics on a forklift, 24 volt thing. Here's your built in hydraulic pump on the end here, works perfectly. And then also what I had to do was get a huge contact breaker up the top here because I kept burning out my switches because the load of this draws that much current that it burns out the little switches in the cab. So what I did is I hooked it through a little switch to turn on this big contactor and now we have no issues whatsoever. Now I brought this motor I think for about $300 and I brought the contactor new second hand on um, eBay old stock thing. I think it was about $40. So there's that motor from a different angle guys and if we look up here you'll see the big contactor that I'm talking about. See the huge contactor I'm talking about guys? That works really really well. And this doesn't even get hot. Now you can buy these little hydraulic motors on eBay and that sort of thing. And I actually tried one of them to start off with. But it's too small because they have their own reservoir tank. And the stroke on the hydraulics of these cylinders is quite large. They're more designed just like for your tipper on a, on a hinge, like about a 12 inch hinge. But the cycle on this to pick a bin up from the ground and lock it on the truck is probably, oh, I would say, 40 seconds. And it's a lot of oil pumping for a little pump. A little, especially a little 12 volt one, whereas the forklift one here is designed to do it all day every day. So I had to use the original reservoir on the hook system and then as you can see the stroke here is quite quite long so those little ones that you get on eBay and that for tippers just wouldn't cut it so that's why I have to have something that would continuously run rather than on off short bursts 
So this is what I come up with. Anyway, it works great. Anyway, guys, I roll it on the drive and I'll show you how it works. I reckon it's pretty cool. So what we've done here, guys, is this is just an original switch that's in the dash of the truck. There's my old truck there. And uh, I've hooked this switch here to that great big um, contactor that I showed you in the box with the pumpers. So uh, what that does is when I turn this on, it powers up that contactor so it doesn't burn the burn the circuit out because it, it drags a lot of power so I don't know if you can hear that with the traffic going past so I'll turn it on and see if you can hear that pump start I hear the pump start it's quite cool eh? here it goes um, here's my remote hit the button on the remote as you can see it's starting to pull the truck underneath the bin Pretty awesome. And look at that, it'll lift 6,000 pounds. Turn your pump off. Engine on. If we want to tip that bin, we just turn the pump on again and we go up. Tip the up button. And here we go, just like a tip truck. Turn the pump off. So as you can see, it works. Um, it works pretty well. Like I say, you lift six thousand odd pounds in that bin. Um, yeah. So for the uh, for the money, I think it's um, pretty good value. A good good little conversion. No issues with it at all yet. Um, yeah. So it's surprising what you can do if you just muck around a bit and uh, and try a different way of doing things. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll turn the pump back on and we'll drop them back down again. As you can see, it's powered up and it's also powered down. Just like that. And if we want to put it back on the ground, same thing again, turn the electric pump on. And then it will hit the ground and then we'll roll the uh, truck forward with the weight of the bin. So guys, that's about it for this time. I just thought you might want to know how to do it a little bit cheaper. You know, if you can do a bit of wheeling and dealing, do a bit of it yourself. It doesn't have to cost a fortune to get into this sort of thing. This whole conversion probably cost me, oh, probably $600. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, you know, it works great. Sometimes, guys, you just got to think out of the box a little bit if you haven't got enough money to do this stuff. Well, that's my theory anyway. Anyway, guys, same as usual. If you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day at peachtools.com. And we'll see you next time with some more useless information, eh? See ya. Bye. Peachtools.com.